going to be looking at adding and subtracting fractions. I can add and subtract fractions as our learning goal. Some jokes. Some jokes. A few math, a few puns make me numb. The math puns make me number. Uh, uh, uh. Okay. Let's get started with adding and subtracting some fractions. So we're going to do these both visually with a drawing and also uh, numerically as well. It says add the following fractions and write them in lowest terms. So we have one-fifth plus three-fifths. So when, when we add and subtract fractions, we want to leave our denominators the same and add the numerators. We want to make sure they have common denominators. So our answer then is four-fifths. What does that look like visually? Well, let's take a fraction, part of a whole here, and let's break it up. One, two, three, four, and five. Now we want to color in one out of five of those. Now, since we're adding three-fifths to it, we've got to add three-fifths. There's one, two, and three. There you go, we've added four um, numbers that don't have the same denominator. So, we've got to figure out what our fraction is, what we add our fraction um, when we add things that don't have like denominators. Well, in order for us to add fractions that don't have like denominators, we have to find out what their least common multiple is or their least common denominator, like we had here. They need to be in common. To do that, we just have to find the multiples that are in common. Okay, well, 2 and 3, uh, to figure that out, 2 and 3, we have 2, 4, 6, and then here we have 3 and 6. Okay? So now our numbers that are in common that are the least are 6. These are our multiples here. So we have a half plus 1 third. How do we go from 2 to 6. Well, we multiplied by 3. How do we go from 3 to 6? Well, we multiplied by 2. Now, we multiply 2 times 3 to get our denominators of 6. And since we're adding, we'll put an addition sign in the middle. 3 times 1 is 3, and 2 times 1 is 2. We, just like here, we leave the denominators the same since they're in common and we'll add the tops to get 5 over 6. So what does it look like now visually? Okay, well let's draw it out and look at it. So our first fraction is a half. So imagine that we took a hole and we cut it into two pieces. Okay, that's what that is here. So we cut a hole in half. Now we've got to do this. So we're going to color in one out of two of those because that's what our fraction is. Now we're going to do the same thing for one third. Okay, so now let's see. We've got one third, so I'll color in one third. Okay, so we've got to make common denominators now for our pictures. How did we go from two now to we three? have to make common denominators for our pictures. So how did we go from two? How did we go from two to six? Well, we multiplied by three, so that means that we have to divide this into thirds. And how did we go from 3 to 6? We multiplied by 2, so we have to divide this in half. So now that we've done that, the last step is to add up our shaded areas. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And our denominator is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So we end up with 5 over 6 visually and also procedurally for our answer. If you don't get it now, no problem. We're going to do a whole bunch more examples. Okay, let's look at another example. We have two thirds plus one fifth. What does this look like visually? So let's solve it using the procedure first. 
So remember that we want to find common multiples, the least common multiple, or also the least common denominator. So we want common denominators, just like in our last example. We do, okay, we want our denominators to be the same. Okay, so our least common multiple of three and five, well, if you don't know, you can list them out. So you have six, nine, 12, and 15. And we have 10 and 15. So our least common multiple is 15. Now you have to ask yourself, how did I go from three to 15? Well, I multiplied by five. If I multiply by five on the bottom, I have to multiply by five on the top. Do the same thing with five. How did I get to 15? Well, I multiplied by three. Multiply by three on the bottom, multiply by three on the top. And I end up with 13 over 15. Now let's look at a visual example here. So we have two thirds plus one fifth. Two thirds plus one fifth. So we know our end goal is going to be 13 over 15. Okay, so let's start by drawing three squares because we're representing thirds. So think of this as part of a whole. Now we have to color in, now we have to color in two out of three of these boxes. Okay, let's do the same thing for one fifth. Okay, there we go. So hopefully you can understand that this is one out of five and this is two out of three. Okay, now we have to ask ourselves, how do we, what are our least common um, denominator for three and five? Well, we said it was 15. And if we look back at our example numerically, we see that we multiplied by five to get to 15. So that means that we have to break this box into fifths. Try your best to make it um, you know, even, but it doesn't have to be necessarily. It should be, but I'm not making it completely even. Okay, there we go. Now ask yourself, how did I go from five to 15? Well, as we said earlier, we multiplied by three. So these five boxes need to be divided into thirds. So we're almost done. Okay, so now we're going to add up are shaded in spaces. So this has 5, 10, 5, 5, that makes 10, plus 1, 2, 3. That's 13. And how many um, spaces do we have in each row? So a total of 15. So we get the same result, which is 13 over 15. Okay, let's look at another example. 5 eighths minus 1 over 4. So like our last example, we're going to solve it numerically first and then come back and draw a picture. Okay, like addition, we have to find common denominators. Now, if you don't know what the common, least common multiple of 8 and 4 is, you can list out your multiples. Okay, so it's 8. Now ask yourself, how do I go from 8 to 8? By multiplying by 1. So I don't have to do anything. I could just rewrite 5 out of 8. Now, how did I go from 4 to 8? Well, I multiplied by 2 times 2. Oh, I already did that. So, whatever I do to the bottom, I have to do to the top. Okay, now I have 5 over 8 minus 2 over 8. 
So I have to subtract. 5 minus 2 is 3 out of 8. So my answer is 3 out of 8. Now let's look at the same example visually. I encourage you to pause the video and try this on your own. We're going to use the same steps we did, but the there's one more thing we want to add on at the end that's a bit different, or I should say subtract on. Alright, so we're going to start off, and we'll just put it down here. Let's see, we have uh, one, we've got eight squares to draw. Seven and eight. All right, now we want to color in five of those. And let's color in four. Or four, let's draw four boxes now. And it says that we've got one out of four of these colored in. Okay, so now you have to ask yourself, how did I go from eight to eight? Well, I multiplied by one, so I don't have to do anything. So I don't have to cut anything in half. Now how did I go from four to eight? Well, I multiplied by two, therefore I have to divide. I have to cut these in half. Now that I have common denominators, eight and eight, I can go ahead and either add or subtract. In this case, I'm subtracting. So I have five eighths minus two eighths. So I have to take away two um, of the eights. One, two. My answer is what's left on the top. I'm left with three. So my answer then is three out of eight. Today you learn how to add and subtract fractions. Thanks for tuning in.